Okay, uh, let's start. This is uh, lecture 21 for incident response technology class. And um, so last time we almost finished the online password cracking, but uh, just leave a few slides left. So online password cracking basically is that you just uh, use remote login and uh, to do the attack. As I mentioned, uh, online password cracking, uh, advantage, disadvantage. Um, oh, I, I, I didn't put it here. Um, online password cracking is the advantage for attacker from attacker point of view. Attacker don't need any uh, knowledge, don't need any knowledge on hacking. Uh, and it doesn't need the victim computer to be vulnerable. So that's an advantage for uh, online password cracking. As long as the remote target allow user login, then you can do all kinds of online password cracking. Uh, so that's the advantage for this. Um, uh, but uh, online password cr cracking, the biggest problem is that it's very slow. You can only try password as fast as the server respond to you, that if the server respond to you, say the password is, is incorrect, then you can try another password. So the biggest problem for online password cracking is that it's very slow. So if you don't have any clue what's the possible password the user, the victim user is, the online, online password cracking usually you cannot achieve it because, because it's so slow. You can only try like, uh, 10, 20 passwords in every one minute. Uh, so unless you have some idea what's the possible password for the victim is, the online password cracking is an effective attacking method. So last time we introduced uh, Hydra. We introduced uh, Hydra and uh, and and we, we, uh, we showed that Hydra, we showed uh, the password cracking to successfully get password for both the Windows machine, for Windows virtual machine, we, we, we created uh, uh, this, we created uh, this vulnerable account with password ABC123. And uh, we have demonstrated that it can get the password correctly uh, because that uh, ABC123 is in the top of the dictionary list. We also show the Hydra, Hydra to do this, uh, to, to get password for the SSH account. Uh, basically using this, we create a Linux on the Metasploitable Linux. We create this, uh, uh, this password, uh, 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 this account and the password. And this Hydra finish that uh, very quickly. Um, Today, I cannot show this uh, Windows virtual machine because uh, I don't know why I, I didn't uh, uh, disable the automatic update. So right now it's doing automatic update. It's so slow, um, but we can still show that for the Linux, Kali Linux, uh, for the Metasploitable Linux, remember we create this uh, CRS6395 account and uh, so we can we can still try this, try this one. Um, uh, remember, we have copied the password file into root directory. We remove we remove the, all the comments part because all the more than ten line of the comments in the top, each one will still be treated as a password. Clearly, that's a waste of the password guessing speed. So, so you can see uh, this one, I have removed all the comment line uh, from last class. So we can use, I, I can try that again, for example, try 10, uh, 10 concurrent connection because for SSH, it can support multiple connections. Dash V is a base, dash V is a, so what password have been tried? And the dash L means what's the user account you want to try. And uh, uh, dash P will give this uh, dictionary list, the password dictionary list. 
So right now the password dictionary list is, is here. And then you supply this uh, target IP address and also what, what service you want to try this uh, password login. So service is SSH, uh, remote uh, the Kali Linux uh, IP address is um, Kali Linux IP address is uh, 2.5. Uh, so we will try this 2.5 and try on the SSH. And you can see every time it will try uh, 10 concurrent connection at a time. And you can see in the second batch, it finds its password. Uh, if we try like uh, uh, one concurrent connection, then by basically every password try, then try second password. So it will be much slower. So for those services that allow concurrent connection, you can try multiple concurrent connection to try. Uh, so the password guessing will be faster. But, but it doesn't mean you can try, for example, 100 concurrent connection. Then most likely the, the correct process using the correct password will fail because the server may not have re the resource to respond all the 100 concurrent connection. Well, I don't know why this one seems to stuck. For this password, oh, it's uh, it's uh, slow. Sometimes it's slow. So you can see that one one concurrent connection will take so long to finish. Uh, the time finish, well, uh, it doesn't show how many how many time to finish. But if we try, for example, one hundred. Oh, uh, 100 is too much. So this uh, pro program only support up to 64 concurrent connections. Let's try 60. Well, 60 is still be supported. So SSL, as a, the SSH service is very good. It can support a lot of concurrent connections. But you cannot try, uh, as I mentioned, if you do this, uh, RDP, remote desktop service, you can only try one concurrent connection because Windows basically only support one, one remote desktop connection at any time. If you, if you put two or three or four here, uh, you may not be able to, to guess the password correctly. So this is Hydra. Hydra is better, uh, but another one we can demonstrate is this NCRAC. And NCRAC is another one, it's very similar. Uh, the problem for NCRAC is that it doesn't show what password have been tried. So we don't really know what's the process for the password guessing attack. So that's the biggest problem. Um, so let's try, this, uh, this CL is also means concurrent connection. So we, we can try NCRAC. And, um, It's uncrack. It's uh, the dev is supposed to show what password have been tried, but it seems uh, the program has some problem. This dash dash v does not show anything. Uh, dash user means what's the user account you want to try. Dash user yes six three ninety five, and then dash p again. Dash p is a dictionary list. And then the target IP address, the service, it, uh, it, it doesn't use uh, like SSH or RDP to represent service. You need to use the port number to represent the service. So basically connecting to this remote IP address on this uh, port number. So uh, if we try 10.0.2.5, uh, SSH service, the port number 22. So we put port number 22 here. CL means concurrent connection. CL means concurrent connection. 
because we are doing SSH connection, so we can use more concurrent connection. Fail to resolve host name IP form. Uh, I think uh, NCRAC changed the, the command again. Let me see. NCRAC. NCRAC. Oh, it's right now it's a dash dash user. So it's not, it's not one dash. Did I put dash dash user here? So it should be dash dash user. So for the newer version, they change the some, some option. Dash dash user, then the user name, uh, then this remote uh, IP address and port number. CL equal to five is still here. So let me try. As that user failed to resolve given host name. Um, Maximum connection limit. Maybe we should put add after the username. Username, the example here is a dash dash user root. So it is correct. Um, um, it's, uh, it doesn't show where is a dictionary file. Let me see. And crack. Dash P password file. Dash P. Yeah, dash P is correct. Uh, output. User dash P. And uh, local host 22. Dash P. This is. Uh, uh, so I think CL equal to five need to be need to be put in another place. Uh, time and timing and performance. Okay, so I think I I, I need to put CL equal to five in another place. CL equal to five. Let me try this one. Uh, okay, let me remove this CL equal to five option. Okay, so it's a CL equal to five. This a maximum concurrent connection limit. It need to be put in another place, uh, not after the target and IP address. Okay, you can see that the discovered credential. Uh, and password is one, two, three, four. So this program actually work. It's uh, just uh, the currently this, this option is different. So one, one, so this one, I don't like this one because uh, first it doesn't show what password have been tried. So we really don't know how many passwords have been tried. So what's the running progress? Uh, secondly, it has already discovered the credential but the program is still running. So I have to use control C to terminate the program. Um, so, uh, let me find what's the CL equal to five or CL equal to number, where should I put it? It's the option. Uh, so option field should be here. It should be CL maximum number minus what minus t 
Yeah, let me try that. Uh, I don't know what the minus t is. Probably you are correct. Uh, minus t. Let's let, let's see if we can find the password. Okay, so it can't find the password. Uh, minus minus g means what? Uh, minus g option option will be applied to every service globally. Hmm. Okay, uh, let, uh, let me just copy this uh, this this one to the flight, uh, so user no. So this, uh, this one needed to be uh, changed. Uh, Uh, I need uh, to copy the new screenshot. Uh, so bear with me because I need to update the slide. The, the original command is incorrect. Okay. The number of terminals must be Yeah. Uh, minus T. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, okay. So uh, this is crack. Okay. So uncrack. Uh, is this command, I'm not sure what the minus T here is, but it works, it will uh, do that. And uh, and uh, this web page will show the uh, three three password cracking software, Uncrack, Hydra, and Medusa. So all of them are included in Kali Linux. So if you want, you can, you can check and uh, learn how to use uh, uh, a Medusa to do this online password cracking as well. And, uh, and one last word for uh, for this password cracking is that you can see password cracking is very easy for attackers to do. They just uh, supply a dictionary and uh, and uh, run the program, so they can run the program for several days, several hours on target. So that means for any system administrator from security point of view, for, IT, for any IT security stuff, you should also be aware of these uh, hacking tools and also be aware of the dictionary list, the dictionary file. So in the internet, there are many, many dictionary files. Uh, a hacker have summarized that those are most popular dictionary password that chosen <clears throat> by many people. And uh, in, in Kali Linux, all the dictionary is in this USR share word list. <coughs> oh, let me, it's, um, it's USR share word list. If, if you see this, this dictionary, so you can see uh, there are many other dictionary. Uh, here just to show the fast track is actually the source file is here, but uh, in the, under this word list directory, uh, they have this uh, basically is uh, is uh, is a link. So uh, if you display this fast track, you basically display this file. So that's the it's like shortcut in Windows. You can create shortcuts of any program or file un, un, under your desktop, for example. If you click that shortcut, you basically clicking and open or execute the corresponding program in another folder, in another, in another directory. Uh, in Linux, uh, this still represent that if you, if you, for example, if you show 
this file. If you show this file, you actually you actually show the uh, the first few lines of this uh, this word list file. Uh, um, Linux just uh, put all these uh, dictionary files, they are shortcuts uh, in, uh, under this folder, so it is easier for you to see. So these are some, some, some word lists. And, um, but one, one word list you should pay attention is this one, rockyou.xt.z. So this is a zip file. And you can see this, that even for this zip file, it has 533, no, it's uh, 53 megabytes. It's a 53 megabytes. So it's a very large uh, dictionary. Uh, if you see unzip, uh, uh, if you see unzip it, basically uncompressed, unzip uh, rock you. If you unzip it, uh, you can see how large this one. It's uh, 139, uh, it's 139 megabytes. And you can see how many passwords in it. Uh, if, if, for example, uh, we, can, we can list uh, this file. Uh, you can see this is a dictionary. Uh, you can see all these uh, normal passwords, one, two, three, four, five, six. For some users that never use computer, this is the most popular password they will choose, 23.5.6, and, and also password. So, so these are the password in this dictionary list. It's very, very long. If you want to know how many lines they have, you can use word count uh, and uh, this uh, rock you file. You can see that it actually has this many, okay, uh, word count dash L means count how many lines. So you can see that it has uh, uh, 14 million. It has 14 million password in this dictionary. So this is a very comprehensive dictionary list. And if you are if you are IT security staff, you know that under your company you have maybe 100 employees. Some of those employees they will pick very easy to remember password. So their password is very likely to be appear in this in this dictionary list. So so for for IT security staff, your responsibility is that uh, you if you IT security staff you should ask each of your employee to check his or her own password against this dictionary list, against the password list. And uh, of course, you cannot check it for them because uh, you don't, uh, your employees should not reveal their password to, to you. Even you are the system, system administrator, you should never require your employee to reveal their password to you. So you can ask each employee to do this check by themselves. You basically supply this uh, rock you file to them and ask them to run this command and uh, put their own password here to run this command to see whether their password uh, 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 exists in, the, in this dictionary or not. For example, uh, suppose you can use this. Suppose my password is, uh, is nice. And uh, then I check uh, against this rockview.txt file, and I can find out find out that well, these are all the password. Oh, oh, it's so many. These are all the password in this rockview that actually contain this night in the password file. So you can see nights, nights one, nights zero six. So even though you think that well. I, I don't, I, I will never use night as my password. I will use night plus like uh, the year I enter UCF. But you can see these are all the nights and the password that contain this night, night character in it. So, so if you use night 11, then if suppose you enter UCF in 2011, then this password is in the dictionary. 
So you can see how many passwords contain this night. Even you make some mutation uh, of, of the password based on the nights, it's highly possible it still exists in this dictionary. So this is a way for you to ask your employee. Ask your employee to do this check by themselves. Just put their password here. Like, uh, like for example, this pass W, uh, W zero R T explain me sign. This is a default password for the Windows VM. Uh, well, this one is not there, but uh, this one, this one is there. This uh, password, this is zero R D explain it, capital P. So it is in, in this drop view. So if your employee find out that their password is in the in the dictionary list that it means that password is very vulnerable because this dictionary list is known for every hackers. So if your password is in this dictionary list, you need to change your password to make sure that it will never appear in this uh, dictionary list. So this is drop view is just one of the dictionary list. There are many other large dictionary list on the internet. So one last word is this, if you are IT security stuff, you need to do this ask every of your employee to check their own password uh, to see whether their password is vulnerable or not. Uh, because as an administrator, as a security staff, you cannot check employee password by yourself because uh, you don't know their password. You cannot require them to re reveal their password to you. So this is a way you do. Okay, so that's the online password cracking. So now we come to the even more fun part for the penetration testing. Uh, penetration testing from this class, to the next two, next two class, maybe two or three class, it's all about uh, compromising. So, um, so we will introduce the Metasploit meta attack uh, for compromising. Uh, from this class, you should download, um, go to my homepage, and download this uh, Windows XP unpatched uh, virtual machine image. Uh, this one is 1.2 gigabytes, so be patient to download this virtual machine image. I created this virtual machine image yesterday. I basically, well, this one you can also download for your own uh, purpose. Uh, this is originally the Windows XP VM image supplied by Microsoft. Um, the unpatched one, the problem is that I, I imported the Windows XP image into my computer yesterday and I, I removed all the security patch. But this one is valid only for 30 days because after 30 days, license expire. And every time when you open it, uh, Microsoft, the Windows will give you a lot of trouble just to say your license expire, you, you need to uh, renew your license. So there are a lot of uh, warning. It will slow down your Windows XP machine. So, so unpatched one is only useful for one month time, basically for this class time. After that, if you want, for example, next year, if you want to do penetration testing by yourself, you can still import original Windows XP virtual machine image. This is original one. Once you import, it will be valid for the next 30 days. So, so, so this one will last forever. But this one is only useful for the next one month time period. So try to download both. For the class purpose, you, you just need to download this unpatched Windows XP slides. So for compromising, uh, the most popular compromising tools is uh, Metasploit. Uh, it is included in Kali Linux, and I will introduce this one. Um, again, this is textbook. Um, remember, I asked you to, to use Nessus uh, in the scanning lecture. So you need to install lesson Nessus because in our homework or in the exam question, we you you will be asked to to do this Nessus, uh, to do this to test Nessus by yourself. 
So uh, when you suppose when you use Nessus to scan this uh, like uh, this metasploitable Linux VM, you will find that it actually has 10 critical vulnerability. Maybe your scan will not return 10 critical, maybe five critical vulnerability, six critical vulnerability, but there are some critical vulnerability. This critical vulnerability is the one that will cause the, that vulnerable Linux VM to be compromised by attacker. Uh, we will first use this to demonstrate. This uh, VSFTPD is a FTP server program running on the, on the metasploitable Linux virtual machine. This uh, Metasploit uh, software, this, uh, this attacking tool uh, is very convenient, very easy to use, and um, it contains a lot of attacking module in it. So you can think that uh, in analogy, we can use a web, uh, the Armory warehouse uh, in equivalent as a Metasploit. In the in the weapon warehouse, there are many weapons like a sniper, machine gun, uh, RPG, all kinds of weapon. Each weapon is only suitable for a specific task. In Metasploit, it's like it's like a warehouse. In this warehouse, it contains uh, more than two thousand attack module, and each attack module is only for one specific vulnerability. Remember for different vulnerability because Linux vulnerability, Windows vulnerability, like a FTP server, HTTP server, all kinds of known vulnerabilities, uh, attacker have produced this attack module. So Metasploit contain more than 2000 attack module in it. When you use Metasploit, it means that you pick a suitable attack module from this warehouse and use it to attack the target. Of course, you need to know that the target has that specific vulnerability exist. Uh, that's where this uh, this uh, Nmap scan and the Nessus scan comes from. When you use this scan scanning, you know what kind of vulnerability exists in the target. Then you can use Metasploit to do the attack. So we will use this uh, VSFTPD as the example uh, to demonstrate that. So first. Uh, you need to, for this uh, uh, penetration testing compromising, you need to run two virtual machines uh, at the same time. One is a Kali Linux, another is a victim virtual machine, either the metasploitable Linux or the Windows XP, the vulnerable Windows XP uh, virtual machine. So you need to run either one of these targets. So you need to have at least two virtual machines running at the same time. So this is a uh, metasploitable. Uh, its uh, IP address is 2.5. And uh, we know 10.0.2.5. We know that uh, uh, this, uh, metasploit this metasploitable Linux machine it's online, it can be accessed by the Kali Linux, and this is all the service opened on that Linux machine. So msf console is, uh, is the command you use to, to execute the Metasploit, uh, these attacking tools. The Metasploitable Linux uh, virtual machine is created specifically as a target for this uh, Metasploit attacking tools. So uh, that's why it's called Metasploitable Linux. So this is uh, MSF console. You can see that um, you can see that currently it contains two thousand one uh, one hundred exploits. So uh, that's why we call Metasploit as a attacking warehouse. So Metasploit is like a platform. Attacker can supply many different attack modules to this platform. So it has these many exploits. I will explain what other means. Um, then, so this is a Metasploit. First, you need to find uh, this uh, attack module because 
Suppose right now we know that we want to attack this VSFTPD service. We want to find existing attack module uh, dealing with this uh, 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 target. So you need to do this search. Remember, it has more than 2,000 attack modules. So we need to, to search uh, VSFTPD, find any attack module that contain this uh, keyword. And we find that there, there exists one attack module. Uh, uh, this attack module is called uh, VSFTPD234 backdoor. This exactly this uh, vulnerability exists in this uh, Metasploitable Linux virtual machine. It, it, it's a backdoor uh, compromising to this uh, VSFTPD to this specific version. And it showed the rank. The rank means uh, how good is this attack module. This, uh, this is excellent. So th it means that this attack module is excellent to compromising that specific vulnerability. So excellent means that every time when you do the attack, it will almost have 100% chance that you will be successful to compromise the target. If the rank is good or normal, usually means that well, sometimes you can compromise the target, but some other time you may not be, be able to compromise the target because this attack module is not that good. So under a certain scenario, attack module may not be able to compromise the target. So, but this one is the rank is excellent. So it can compromise without any problem. So search is a find attack module. Next is this attack module out from the warehouse. It's just like uh, you pick the specific weapon from the weaponry warehouse. Uh, before you use it, you, you, you need to get it out, make it ready. So next is use, use command is, so uh, basically tell Metasploit, Metas, Metasploit software that I want to use this attack module. If this use command is successful, you can see that, see this prompt. You can see the prompt that this attack module has been uh, loaded successfully. So uh, this is um, use command. After you pick the weapon out of the warehouse, you need to do some configuration. Like uh, if you pick a sniper, you need to get the corresponding bullet. You need to adjust the, the scope. So all these actions, you, you need to make this attack module ready for the target. So one, one configuration you need to do is uh, choose attacking payload. Uh, the payload terminology is a little bit confusing. Um, basically, uh, the attack module may, means that you can compromise the target, but after you compromise the target, what action you want to do? Like most, uh, most action is that when the code compromise the target, you want to create a remote shell, remote uh, command can control terminal, and then you can run all the command in that terminal. So th this is the most popular way for you to, uh, in my world, I, I would call it the access on the target. So the most popular access for attacker is create remote shell so attacker can log in to the target. Another popular access is create, for example, create remote desktop. Then you can control the compromised target just as, as if you're running physically on the target machine. Just like in Windows computer, you can create remote, remote desktop so you can use mouse and keyboard to control the remote, remote compromised Windows machine to do all this uh, operation very easily for its attacker. There are many other access methods for attacker, like uh, using the web, uh, create a, a web server and web client method way to control the target. Uh, and uh, so there are many kind of access uh, control way for attacker. This payload just means how do you want to control the target once you compromise the target? So choose attacking payload. So in Metasploit, it's called payload. 
whether you want a remote shell, whether you want a remote desktop, or whether you want a remote app, remote FTP, because sometimes attacker just want to, for example, download some secret file on a compromised target. Then you can you can specify that once I compromise target, I want to create an FTP service, so I can download those secret file to my local machine. Um, or you can simply re remote execute a command. Uh, I don't need to create a remote shell. I don't want to do the interaction. I just want to run a specific command on the target. For example, delete all the hard drive on the target. Uh, so this, this is another type of uh, uh, control method you want to do. So who is attacking payload just means which kind of control access you want to, to do on target. Uh, so first, you use this command show payloads because for different attack module, uh, they may support only a, only a portion of all these all kinds of attack module that uh, uh, all these uh, because some some attack they can only su uh, support remote shell connection. Some attack, they will not be able to create remote desktop on a compromised target. So you need to use a show payload to, to, to see what kind of access, access control is supported by that uh, specific attack module. So you use this uh, command uh, show payload. Show payload. Show payload. Uh, so for this uh, VS FTPD attack module, it only support one payload. This uh, payload is uh, Unix interact. So it only support a shell command, shell terminal for once you compromise target. It doesn't support to create a remote desktop. Um, remote desktop probably is easier for attacker to control the target. But uh, this VF FTBD does not support that. So only one payload, then you, uh, you can only use this one payload. The, the, use this one payload, you use this command, set payload <clears throat> to set what payload you want to use. So this one only has, has this one option. So there's no other option. We will just use this one. And if you see this uh, payload, then that means you have set payload correctly. It's just like uh, when you get a rifle out of the weaponry, you want to set it the burst, burst shooting or single shot shooting. So that is the, the two different payload you can choose. So this is a set the payload, which kind of control you want to use on the weaponry. So set payload, then and it's not ready yet. So uh, another set before you actually do the attack is configure some settings for the for the attack module. For example, for this remote comp compromise, one configuration is target IP address because you want to, to connect to target. So you need at least to specify what the target IP address is. There may be some other options, settings you need to set. So what options you need to, what setting you need to set, you, you, need, you use this uh, show options uh, to, to check what parameters you need to, to set up before you actually do the attack. Um, the settings, usually there are two settings. One setting is for the attack module. So this is the module option. It just means this setting is used for this attack module. And the payload option uh, shows what kind of setting you need to set because of that specific payload. Uh, for this impact, there is no any, there is no options you need for, need for you to set. But for this attack module, it has two parameters. One is the remote support. Uh, this one is required. You can see required. It has already been preset uh, because this is this is FTP service. 
So it has already set as 21, because that's the you know, FTP service port. Uh, but this parameter is required, but it's miss missing. So you need to set this, this parameter. It's our host, the target host IP address. So, so we need to set this, uh, this parameter. Uh, you might explore it. it, it doesn't care about capital letter or small letter. So you can use the set our host here. And we set uh, the, the Metasploitable Linux. Uh, remember the, this uh, Metasploitable Linux IP address is uh, 10.0.2.5. So we need to set target IP address is that. And uh, we can run, we can show options again. You could just uh, use mouse, use uh, the keyboard, the up arrow then you can go back to all the previous uh, command you have typed. Just uh, in the cell, you can use this upper arrow, down arrow, to go through previous typed, typed command. So previously, I have already typed a show option, so I don't need to type it again. Just to use upper arrow uh, to go up. And now we can see that this required setting uh, parameter has been set. So all the parameter has been set. So everything is ready. Now you can execute attack. Execute attack is very simple. Just run exploit command. And you can see here, found shell means uh, command shell session one open. So this uh, shell has been opened. And now you can see that uh, you can run any command. This is a Linux shell. So the command is a Linux command. Uh, you can see what's the current uh, directory is in this directory. If I go to etc directory and uh, show this uh, password file, uh, you can see this is a password file in the Metasploit Linux. Remember this the last account, CIS6295. CIS and uh, uh, you can run this command to see uname dash all. Uh, this uh, in Linux, uh, uname basically show system uh, uh, system information. Just like in Windows, you can show computer property that it will tell you whether you are running Windows uh, 10 64 bit or Windows. Uh, Windows 10 home home version. So it just to show system information. In Linux, uh, your name, it will show system information. It shows that the system is Linux uh, might exploitable 2.6.24. So that is, uh, if you run this command here, you can see this is uh, the Linux uh, system information. So you can see this, this attack it is successful. We have set up a remote shell on the target machine. And this remote shell actually has root privilege. So you can do all kinds of things using this uh, root privilege account. If you want to access the shell, you just type exit. Then this uh, command shell session one is closed and it will return back to the Metasploit uh, platform. So that's the overall process. It's, it only contains a few steps and it's very, very simple for, for any user to learn. You just need, need five to 10 minutes, you can learn it. Um, and uh, you don't need to know <clears throat> how to compromise that vulnerability by yourself. You just need to know that for that particular vulnerability, the attack module exists in the Metasploit, then you can run Metasploit to compromise a remote machine. <clears throat> so now you have a remote shell with the root uh, uh, access. <clears throat> uh, you can see more information about remote shell. Uh, this means from the current computer. Well, it, it doesn't show it very correctly, but it showed that this remote computer 
the connection is on the port 6200. So that is a backdoor created by the compromised, uh, by, by this uh, attack module and, uh, and then create this uh, shell connection. So you can try all the other critical vulnerability you might exploit uh, in, uh, for here. Summary of this, uh, how to use Metasploit to do this compromise is, uh, I summarize here. Before you actually do this attack, you first need to use Nmap or Nessus or any other scanning software to find what vulnerability exists in the target machine. So that's the, that's the purpose for scanning. After you find uh, the particular vulnerability you want to compromise, then you run Metasploit you first use search command to search the exploit module for that particular vulnerability. Uh, you don't need to know the full name. You just need to know the partial name for that uh, vulnerability. You can do the search. This is simple text search. Then you use this uh, use command to load the attack module. Basically get the weapon out from the weaponry. So use the attack module. The command is used. Then you use this uh, show command to show payloads, to show what kind of payload supported by this attack module. Some attack modules, they only support one payload. Some attack module, they support more than 20 payloads. Uh, then you set payload, use this set payload command. Um, uh, maybe I should uh, color it. Uh, This is a search command, and this is the use command, and uh, show available payloads is uh, show payloads. This is a command, and the set payload is using this command, set payload command to set the payload that you want to use. Then show parameter used for the attack to go through is show options. This is then set the missing option is basically using this uh, command set to set the command. Then X, then run this command, exploit command. So uh, these are overall steps, uh, basically search and use, use a attack module, show payloads, then set payload, uh, then show options, uh, then set all these uh, missing parameters in the options. After all the options, all the required options has been set, you run exploit to actually execute the attack. So that's the overall <clears throat> procedure for Metasploit. <clears throat> okay, uh, some, for some student, um, if you first uh, run this search command, you may have this warning. Um, if this is the warning, because for some students, uh, 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 there's no problem, but some, for some other students, uh, this could be the problem. Uh, the base cache not built yet, use a slow search. It just means, remember, Metasploit has more than 2000 attack module. So Metasploit actually has uh, included the database uh, to contain all these attack modules uh, keyword and uh, this payload keyword all in them to build a database. So when you run search command, it will be very fast. But this warning message just means that uh, the database has not been built for the Metasploit yet. So this search will be very slow. It's, it's just one by one search, it's very slow. So here is a tutorial. Let me see if this tutorial still exists. Yeah, this tutorial still uh, uh, exists. 
Uh, it shows how to fix Metasploit database uh, problem. And um, basically, you, 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 these are all in Kali Linux. Uh, you can close this Metasploit. Uh, how to close Metasploit is uh, simply execute. Uh, exit. Uh, you can exit Metasploit. Uh, you run uh, run this command, uh, service post GRE SQL start, basically start this uh, uh, SQL database service. Then you run this msfdb init, basically initialize uh, the database for msf console for the metasploitable program. Uh, after this initialization finished, uh, you, you can, you can uh, when you when you enter this MSF console, you use this DB rebuild cache to rebuild the cache for the database. So after that, database will be available to use. So that's the basic process. If you, if on your Kali Linux, you have met this kind of uh, data, database slow search problem. And actually, there are some online tutorial that show the other Metasploit attack to this uh, Metasploitable to Linux virtual machine. So this is one. Uh, it contains a lot of uh, attack. Like uh, it actually, uh, it, it's a good tutorial. It first show that, uh, it first showed that you need to use a map to do the scan. Uh, the first attack you can try is VSFTPD. Use uh, MSF console, uh, you search VSFTPD, then you use this uh, use command. Um, well, it, uh, it has another command info. You can see more detailed information about attack module you have just loaded. So this is more detailed information. Uh, show options, uh, then you need to set the option. Uh, uh, it doesn't use this uh, show payload because this one only has one payload. So there's no other way, no other payload. So the default will use that payload. So it doesn't use a payload. So options set the target IP address, then you run the exploit. So that's the first um, attack using this metasploitable to attack. And you can see this, uh, this is very long. Uh, second, third, uh, and uh, fourth. So it tried many attacks to the metasploit. If you, uh, you can follow this, this page and do all these, try every one of them by yourself. Some of them may not be successful because some of those attack modules, their rank is uh, like uh, normal or good. So maybe those one, some try you can be successful, but some other try you will not be successful. Um, so this is a very good uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, this is a very good tutorial that uh, you can learn to attack Metasploit. Um, we will demonstrate the following three attack uh, in that, uh, uh, tutorial is they show them probably 10 or nine attack. We will demonstrate these three attacks. Um, so let me demonstrate, uh, for example, this uh, Samba. Samba is, uh, is a Linux system file sharing. Linux in Linux uh, world, is, this is a network file sharing system, like uh, multiple computers, they can share their network drive to each other. So Samba is the service for that. Um, so we can load MFF console. Oh. Uh, different time when you run MSF console, its logo will be changed because it has contained a lot, a lot of logo. Um, so we search Samba. Uh, 
with Samba. Let me let me see. I think Samba attack is the second one on this. Samba attack is the second. Is is this one? Samba you is a Unix uh, multi user map script. So let me try that. So you attack module is uh, is this one. Uh, why you try this one? Uh, because this one you can see that this rank is excellent, and this is a vulnerability existing in the Metasploitable Linux, and it's excellent. So we, we will try that one. We will use this attack module, and um, it showed uh, if you don't configure the payload, then default will use this payload. Uh, but if you can try to see what other payloads supported by this uh, by this attack module, and uh, you can see that it supports many many uh, modules. Uh, this is uh, Unix uh, command. They are all belong to command. So command generic or command Unix reverse. The default one is uh, reversed. Uh, so we we will we can set a payload. Uh, this this one reverse SSH means this uh, shell will use SSH connection. So this shell will be encrypted. So uh, the normal shell that like like, uh, like this uh, payload uh, Unix, this one is not encrypted. So everything transmitted in this uh, command shell is uh, plain text. But you can you can encrypt it uh, using SSH uh, using some others. So these are the possible payloads supported by this attack module. Uh, so let's just use this reverse. Then we show options. Uh, what parameter you need to set here. Uh, there are two options. Uh, the options for module is the remote host. So we need to set our host. Uh, the the metasploitable target is 2.5. And uh, the port is 139. So that is the Samba service port. So we will not change it. The, the payload option, because this is reverse, Reverse means that this shell, normally, normally the shell is that from the Kali Linux, you set up PCB connection to the compromised machine. So that is a normal connection from the attacking machine to the victim machine, you set up PCB connection. The reverse just means that this shell is set up by, from the compromised machine, set up PCB connection back to the attacking machine. The attacking machine, the attacking machine will use this port number to listen in, to receive, accept this incoming connection from the compromised machine. So this is a reverse connection. Uh, uh, and that's why it's called reverse. The local host IP address is this Kali Linux uh, IP address. I think my Kali Linux IP address is, uh, is uh, 2.4. So this uh, local local host IP address is already set, so we don't need to set that. And we can show options again to verify all the required parameters they have been they have been set. Uh, then we can run this exploit. You can see this uh, command shell one opened, and this one showed that. Uh, in local computer, the port number is 4444, is what you set in this uh, local port number. So uh, for real attackers, they will always, they need always change the default port number. Because if you use a default port number, every security staff, they know this port number in this uh, attack module. So 
So if you see such traffic, then you will immediately know that there is a remote shell generated by Metasploit. So for real attacker, they actually, they will modify all the default ports. At least they will not use the default local port 4444 for their connection. Otherwise, it will be easily detected by security staff. But right now, we, we didn't change it. So this shell connection is from the local port, this one. This is a remote port on this uh, compromised machine. And this shell has been uh, created. If you check the system information, you can see that uh, we actually have the shell on the uh, remote uh, Linux, uh, Metasploitable Linux uh, virtual machine. Uh, this shell, it doesn't accept. Uh, oh, uh, uh, this shell, the, there's one problem. When you tap exit, it actually closes the connection, but uh, but it doesn't return back to Metasploit. You can see all the other commands after you run, it doesn't give you any response. So this shell is actually closed. Uh, how do I get out of probably control C, you can use control C, you can abort this session one because the shell has already been closed. But uh, I think this programming problem is they didn't close this uh, session. So you use control C, you can access this. So we show this, uh, this is a Samba, uh, this se second uh, attack in this Samba attack. And uh, third one is Unreal IRCD. Uh, this is uh, which port? I'm not sure which port is that, but we can search Unreal. If you don't know the full name, you just search for partial name. It's uh, Unreal IRCD. So there's only one Unreal IRCD. This is the backdoor vulnerability. Again, this ranking is excellent. So we will use this one, I use this attack module. And uh, you can run this info command to show more detail about this, uh, this attack module. Um, these are more detail about that attack module. Uh, then we show payloads, uh, what payloads support it. Uh, so here it supports some, so let's just use, uh, Last time we tried the com Linux command reverse. So this time we try this uh, Linux command generic. Uh, we set the payload. Now we show options, parameters we need to set. Again, uh, we need to set our host. And the uh, remote port is for 667, so we don't change that. This is required. Uh, the payload is a command. So this payload, actually the command string to execute, it doesn't create a remote shell. It just uh, create remote shell to run a specific command you want to run. So let's set command as, for example, you name, you name. A. Let's show the option. So we set all of them, then we can run the exploit. This one is not successful. Uh, 
this one is not successful. Let me see what's the Unreal RCD. Okay, oh, it's it's here. Uh, it, it doesn't use any payload. Uh, the payload, it actually create a command. So probably this payload is not good. It, but no session was created, the, same, the back door. So we need to set another payload. So let's just use this normal one, uh, reverse. Uh, here, this uh, lhost uh, parameter is missing. So we set lhost is uh, right now we are using Kali Linux. My Kali Linux, uh, IP address is 2.4, so I will set this. And I can also set uh, L port, so don't use this default one. Suppose, suppose we use this, uh, this port for the L port. Uh, show the option. As remote port, you cannot change because that's the vulnerability port that you want to exploit. So uh, now we run exploit, see whether it's successful or not. Okay, so this time the connect the compromise is successful. You can see command shell to open because this shell, uh, like uh, the previous shell, you can only uh, run one command. So it's uh, I don't know why that shell only support one command. Uh, this shell support interaction. So once you create a shell, you can run multiple commands. So if, if I check, we can see that we are, uh, we are in this uh, Metasploit Linux machine. You can see this, uh, this, this uh, user account. Exit, oh, this exit, it's the same thing. Okay, so we, we, we have demonstrated all three, oh, uh, I haven't dem demonstrated Tomcat, but maybe maybe next time. So uh, just remember this, uh, this, uh, this uh, seven process for you to do the compromise. And I hope after class, you can at least try some of, the, some of those attacks for the metasploitable Linux. Uh, next class, I will try to you metasploitable attack to the Windows XP virtual machine. Um, as I said, uh, I have set up that Windows XP virtual machine by myself. I, I disable automatic updates. Remember for, for Windows VM, once you import, you should definitely disable automatic update. Otherwise it will update sometime and it, it, it will take forever. Disable this one, and I also removed all the Windows uh, security packs. And uh, there's no good way to remove it automatically. Uh, we did some research, try to generate a script to remove them, but the script is, is not that very good. After you run the script, you still need to manually do uh, some operation to remove some remaining security patch. So I, uh, I, right now, I just use manual way. I manually delete each one of those security patch. In Windows XP, there are more than 60 security patch. So I deleted one by one by myself, and uh, it took maybe 15 to 20 minutes to do the deletion. So it's not that terrible. If you want to do penetration testing later for yourself or for others, you can use this original Windows XP virtual machine image and do this operation by yourself. Um, after that, all the security patch will be removed. And I also disable the firewall on the Windows XP. So, so all these uh, incoming connections will not be blocked. So uh, 
right now, once you import that uh, unpatched Windows XP, uh, then you should uh, have everything ready. You don't need to do all this operation by yourself. Um, okay, that's all for this class. So next time we will demonstrate this Windows XP compromising. Thank you. Thank you. See you this Wednesday. Thank you.